If you're looking for COVID-19 testing, look into Quest, the lab that's processed over 25 million tests and counting. You can get the same test hospitals use without a doctor visit. Simply order online, select from drive through or at-home options, and get results sent securely to your phone or computer. It's experience and accuracy you can trust from Quest, the largest medical testing lab in the country. So order today at questcovid19.com. That's questcovid19.com. Of all the streaming services out there, only one is different. Discovery Plus. It's the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet. 55,000 episodes of food, love, true crime, home, from networks like TLC, HGTV, and tons more. Yes! With stars like Chip and Joe, an exclusive new series from 90 Day Fiancé, all in one place. Bam! Discovery Plus, coming January 2021. Stream what you love. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 313. Since the very beginning of this case, I knew that what was going on in New Mexico was absolutely ridiculous. Jeffrey Epstein didn't just happen to fall into New Mexico. He didn't just happen to choose Stanley, New Mexico, right outside of Santa Fe by accident. It was done specifically. And there are several reasons why. Now, we know that he wanted to be closer to the Santa Fe Institute and to some of his other scientists' buddies at Los Alamos. But there was more. The fact that Jeffrey Epstein did not have to register as a sex offender in New Mexico most certainly played into the motivation of him purchasing that ranch in the first place. We know that him and Ghislaine Maxwell and their handlers were playing the long game. We know that these people weren't just making snap decisions. They had a blueprint laid out and they followed it to the T. And the fact that New Mexico was a place where you do not have to register as a sex offender if you've committed in another state on certain levels is part of their plan, right? New Mexico just happened to be the perfect place for Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell and their handlers to run this operation. In the middle of the desert, nobody around, all kinds of secrecy, access to several airports, access to a vibrant scientific community, and the cherry on top? His perverted ass doesn't even have to register. And still, to this day, New Mexico has not fixed their laws. And I don't want to feel like I'm jumping on New Mexico as a whole, right? Because I really enjoyed my time there when I was in Santa Fe. The time that I spent in, uh, you know, the old downtown area of Santa Fe. And Albuquerque had some cool spots. And it's a beautiful place if you're into the Southwest. And I most certainly am. So I don't want to act like, you know, the people of New Mexico are all kinds of screwy. But the politicians in New Mexico... They all need to be checked. This is abhorrent that this guy, that uh, such a prolific offender, didn't have to register within the state. And to top that off, here we are all, a year later, longer than a year later, I mean, and still no raid of Zorro Ranch, still nothing. And according to the local authorities, oh yeah, we have an investigation running, but we've seen nothing of the sort. And like I reported back in February, when I was in New Mexico, speaking with sources about Zorro Ranch and what occurred there and what allegedly occurred there, it was pretty common knowledge to people that were around the city of Santa Fe and the surrounding area that Jeffrey Epstein was a a gross son of a bitch. And they always knew that he was there, too, because of the light pollution from people partying at the ranch. So people in town knew what the deal was with Epstein. People understood that he was a gross bastard. And they also understood that somehow, some way, hint, hint, money, Jeffrey Epstein was able to finesse a lot of the high top politicians in the state. And he, there, he, he had his own little fiefdom down there in Stanley, pretty much, right? 
private property, all those acres, nobody around, his own private security force, helicopters to ferry people in and out under secrecy. And still, we're sitting here wondering, what's the real story (laughs) about Zorro Ranch and New Mexico? We haven't even got past the surface of what was going on in the deserts of Stanley, New Mexico, folks. There's a lot more here. And I don't, I'm not going to, you know, take any giant leaps or anything, but New Mexico is a place where there is a serious problem with sex trafficking and especially indigenous girls going missing. And it's a, uh, it's scary to think how many girls that were caught up in this whole entire ordeal are unnamed. And when you look at the desolation that Zorro Ranch offers, it's a scary, scary thing to think about. So let's jump into our article here from KOAT Action News. It's a local New Mexico station. And this article was first published July 11th of 2019. The headline... Jeffrey Epstein did not have to register as sex offender after setting up Stanley residence. Isn't that nice? Sure makes you feel comfortable if you're living in Santa Fe, huh? Or if you're living in Albuquerque or any of the surrounding areas. And Santa Fe is a pretty affluent community, folks. I mean, it's not a very big place, but it's not a cheap place to live by any means. And there is a vibrant, rich community there, uh, artists, etc., etc., so, I mean, imagine you're one of these people, you could spend two, three million dollars on a piece of property and you find out that people can move there from other states who are sex offenders and not have to register. Talk about picking up shop and moving ASAP. This article was authored by Christine Pay. Billionaire financier, pedophile, Jeffrey Epstein, a convicted sex offender in Florida, was set to be registered as one in New Mexico when he planned to come to the state years ago, according to documents obtained by Target 7. All right, sounds kosher so far, right? He was uh, he was going to register in New Mexico when he planned to come according to these documents that were obtained by the reporters and everything was on pace to be how it should be. But Epstein's registration was withdrawn due to differences in state laws in Florida and New Mexico. You know what we call that, folks? That's called a loophole. And how many times am I railing about loopholes? The justice system is nothing but loopholes created for scumbags like Epstein, his bagmen, his handlers, and the other dirtbags that move in so-called polite society so that they can navigate the laws, so that they can play on a different field than the rest of us. It goes back to Epstein setting up a residence in a luxury mansion near Stanley years ago. Records obtained from the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office show Epstein listed the mansion as his New Mexico address in 2010. Now remember, that was after he was already convicted. So if you're living in a place with normal laws that care about the community and care about keeping the community aware of the sort of people that might have access to their children, well then, you know, you might want to hear about Jeffrey Epstein moving into the neighborhood or becoming a resident. But because he didn't have to register, nobody knew. The change of address pinged Florida law enforcement to give the New Mexico Department of Public Safety a heads up, saying Epstein intended to move or visit the state. Now, we know Florida has been absolutely derelict in their duty when it comes to prosecuting Jeffrey Epstein or holding him or his co-conspirators Um, accountable for what they did, but at least they had the good sense to call the New Mexican law authority and let them know that Epstein had changed his address, he was a sex offender, and they might want to update their registry as well. Florida officials notified New Mexico DPS on July 22, 2010, that Epstein was a convicted sex offender from a 2008 case in Florida involving procurement of a person under 18 for prostitution. Yeah, you're a sex offender, homie. 
I don't know how anyone can finagle that, right? But I guess when you have the notorious one, Mr. Naked Volleyball playing, I kept my underpants on Dershowitz, all is possible, right? When you have that man as your lawyer... Well, you are hooked up and you will not have to uh, um, register as a sex offender in New Mexico, especially. I mean, you know, Alan Dershowitz is your guy, right? He knows everybody, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. The next day, New Mexico DPS sent Epstein a letter stating he must register as a sex offender in New Mexico and before doing so, must provide the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office with the judgment and sentence regarding your sex offense, your sex offense conviction. So, they send him this the next day after they receive the information from Florida about Jeffrey Epstein being a convicted sexual offender with a charge of procuring someone under 18 for prostitution, which is ridiculous on its face and for another uh, conversation at another point, I guess. But we all know that that is not what he should have been in jail for or convicted of. But by August that year, a second letter from the New Mexico DPS stated Epstein no longer had to register. Yeah, you know, no big deal. No big deal, Jeff. You come here. We know that you're a good guy. I mean, you threw a bunch of money around in our elections here. You and Bill Richardson are homies. Mr. Bill Richardson, who runs New Mexico like it's his own little kingdom. Yeah, the same Bill Richardson that's being credibly accused of partaking in Jeffrey Epstein's sordid affairs, by the way. Yeah, that Bill Richardson and that New Mexico. It turns out Epstein's Florida prostitution conviction involved a girl aged 17, and the rules are different when it comes to that particular offense in New Mexico. You don't think Jeffrey Epstein knew this in 2010 after his conviction? You don't think that he knew that he could not register as a sex offender, thus change his address to New Mexico? Furthermore, when the prosecutors first had this case in Palm Beach, there was girls much younger than 17 that were abused by Jeffrey Epstein. But instead, they went with the girl who was 17, so it looked like Jeffrey Epstein could have been faked, could have been fooled. It was the girl's fault. I'm so sick of that bullshit with these people all the time. The same toads, the same serpents, the same story. While in New Mexico, we expressly disapprove of such conduct as specific to this case, the determination made when someone must register in New Mexico is a fact-based inquiry, a New Mexico DPS spokesman said in an email statement. Folks, you see what the problem is here, right? The problem is the people who write the laws. I will take every opportunity to hammer that point home here on the show because these people who are creating these laws and then putting them into place are the real problem. These scumbag lawyers, these scumbag political elite that we keep on sending to write these laws locally and to D.C. continue to do disgusting and dirty shit like this, like telling us, Oh, he doesn't have to register because, oh, she was just 17. And, you know, that's that's what we have on record here. Meanwhile, we all know the story. We all know the girls were 14. And it all goes back to that horrible plea deal and the original prosecution in Florida. That has become such a thorn in the side of getting justice in this case that I can't even tell you how much it has infected things. The spokesman said in comparing the varying state laws between Florida and New Mexico, it was determined at the time that because the victim was not under the age of 16, Mr. Epstein does not have a registration requirement in New Mexico, according to New Mexico DPS. And again, we go back to Dershowitz, Ken Starr, uh, Gerald Lefcourt, etc., etc., finessing the prosecution the first time around and making sure that these girls weren't these young girls that were under 16, 15, 14, weren't the ones that Jeffrey Epstein was convicted of abusing. 
And the fact that the only charge that he got was the one that he did get that first time around, it just goes to show you how corrupt it all was. And I really hope the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals feels the same way and they throw out the whole entire baby with the bathwater, folks. And if that occurs, if that non-prosecution agreement goes by the wayside, if it's, if it's, um, if they find that it was put into place illegally, then all bets are off and all of these people are going to be really scurrying for cover then. The New Mexico Attorney General's office said it is also investigating Epstein's case and has been in contact with survivors. Well, I don't know about that. I haven't heard anybody uh, talk about uh, the New Mexico portion of this case as far as survivors go. I mean, they might have been in the beginning or with their lawyers or something like that, but I don't. Honestly, you want my honest opinion, and I'll I'll give it to you. I don't believe there is a vigorous investigation going on by the state of New Mexico right now. I think that they're relying way too much on the feds here, and I think that they're scared to ruffle feathers locally with some of the high-profile politicians that are involved. That... I mean, I, you know, I haven't heard anything about the survivors being contacted by these guys, but... It sure looks to me that New Mexico is not taking this as seriously as they should. And if I was the attorney general of um, New Mexico, this would be a pretty serious investigation in my book. And I would have raided the property. You don't need the feds to raid that property. You can pull a state warrant, go to a local judge, get a warrant and kick the door in. But in my opinion, what's going on here is they're so corrupt. The high level politicians in New Mexico and the power players in New Mexico that they won't let this occur. Epstein currently faces federal charges of sex trafficking out of New York and Florida. Well, we know that he is no longer with us anymore, so that's not the case. But he was facing those charges of sex trafficking out of New York and Florida, right? But nowhere did they say out of New Mexico. How come New Mexico has always been left out of all of these charges out of the bigger conversation. In my opinion, that's because there's something more there that they still don't want us to know about. What that is, I have no idea, folks. But my fascination with New Mexico and Zorro Ranch started early on in this case, and so much so it spurred me to go down there and investigate the place in person. And I'm planning another trip at some point when this craziness Uh, dies down, but there is more story there. There is a lot more going on in New Mexico, and that veil of secrecy has to be pulled off at some point. We have have contacted the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York and will be forwarding additional evidence to federal authorities for proper action, AG's office spokesman Matt Baca said. So again, it's all about the federal case, right? The federal case, the federal case, the federal case. Well, why is the Virgin Islands running their own investigation. I think that New Mexico should be running their own investigation. We know that Florida is internally looking at what's going on here. This case is being prosecuted right now in New York. So I'm sure that, you know, we can consider that locally there as well. But the only place where we don't have a robust investigation, a robust look at what is going on, what went on, and how it occurred is in Zorro Ranch, New Mexico. My question for all of you is, and I know it's rhetorical at this point, but the question is, why? If you'd like to contact me, you could do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, I'll be back tomorrow.